guys and welcome back to another video. So this is the fourth episode of my dissertation diaries. Previously we have had the proposal, legal analysis, writing a chapter and now more research. Uh, so today's video is basically just going to be about how I am researching for my dissertation, the sites that I'm using, how I just do research generally for essays and then you can watch me do a bit of research. Yay! <laughs> And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through how I do my research. A dissertation is a bit different to how I would normally do an essay because an essay, obviously, I have my starting point within the question. I know the areas. I've probably had lectures on it. So I kind of have a bit of a nudge in the right direction. Whereas my dissertation was pretty much free fall, do what you want on your own. <laughs> However, because obviously when you're shaping a dissertation question, you do a lot of like preliminary research, you kind of also have that nudge. So the research in this kind of just relates to a chapter because obviously throughout my proposal and things, I knew what each chapter would roughly contain and then it's about beefing that up and researching more into it. So it's kind of that element, the secondary stage of research that I'm gonna feature in this video. So the chapter that I'm going to be talking about in this is my chapter three, which, the question is, should germline gene editing be used to alter human genes? It looks at the ethical arguments that were brought up in the Hansard debates about the legislation, which were, is there a need for that technology? The lack of consent because future generations can't consent to something that's happening now. There are inequality arguments and eugenics arguments. So those four things are what I want to look into in more detail. So how I would do that is firstly, I'm not gonna be needing to look into like West law, looking at statute or legislation, although you can do that if it relates to like what you're doing. I'm not going to be looking at law show because there are no textbooks really on this area that are gonna be talking about those issues. It's quite a specified bit of research. So obviously the method of attack is going to be different. But if it was something that I could look at textbooks or West law for and look at case law or statute, then I obviously would do that through my subject guides, which you can see here. Um, and it basically is something that the university has set up to have quick links so you can log on to certain sites quickly. So because it's specified, what I'm gonna do is I looked at your search and I had a key search of say, right, eugenics, gene editing. And then basically I would look at all the articles linked under that and download them. And then exactly the same for Google Scholar. I mean, I prefer Google Scholar to your search. I mean, your search, you can do advanced searches, but I don't really like how your search, which is my library directive, I don't really like how it works. I much prefer Google Scholar. Um, and you can do advanced search on Google Scholar as well. Keywords, exact phrases, you know, articles between the dates, because obviously these issues are quite new. I want it within the last 30 years. What I also like about Google Scholar is you can do library links. So you can type in like your institution. So for me, it's York. And then any articles that you can access via that library, it will show on Google Scholar. Um, so it kind of saves you like finding an article that you really, really want to read and then not being able to read it because it isn't available to your library. So as you can see, here's some of the key searches I did. So I'm looking at gene editing, the ethics, consent, inequality, eugenics. These are kind of the searches that I would do to try and find what I want to find. And then uh, again, I would just like download when they sort of mention stuff that I want to look into. Okay, so that's like stage one of my research. I download all of the articles that sort of look like they're gonna include something that will then relate to my research, bang them all into a folder. So you can see them all here. Like I think it was like 60-ish things that I wanted to read for a few of my chapters. And then they're all in the folder. And then basically I set out to tackle 10 plus a day. It depends on how many pages there are. It also depends on whether the whole article is relevant to what I want to research or whether there are just elements that are related to my research. I know a few of you have also asked me like how I read so much and that is pretty much it. Like I know in this, I might read like 20, 30 journal articles in a day and that might seem like so much and it does seem like so much, but I'm not actually reading every single page of every single journal article. I'm reading the abstract or the introduction if there's not an abstract, some like getting a feel for what the article's about and then skimming to the bits that are directly relevant to what I wanna know. So realistically out of those 30 articles, I'm reading like a quarter of all the articles. So it's not actually that many. So yeah, that's kind of like my technique of how I read the articles. If you want a video on that, let me know. But yeah, so then I do that, I read them all and then I put it in to my research document. I mean, the way I set it out is I have subheadings. It's all like hyperlinked. So ethics on gene editing is the title of my chapter. Then, and then the need for gene editing is like the argument or the paragraph. And then 
In bold, you can see sort of the source that I used. In, in the text, that is like the quote or a summary of what was said, and then I reference it with the page numbers. Same with articles, you know, and that's what I do with research. So as I read through articles, I put the research directly into my research document as I go, so that when I've read all my articles, I've got a fat document basically with all of my research that's already referenced, that's already laid out oh, how I want it in the subheadings in the right bits. So then when I come to write my essay, I can just go straight to that bit, say for example on gene editing, the need for it, and go okay, I'm gonna write 600 words on this, here's all the arguments for and against, and I can flick back through them and then just go and write it up and it's much, much quicker to do it that way. So you can see here, there are some bits in red. The red is just my thoughts basically on what somebody has said. This is how I might wanna argue it if I were to write that up. And then I just sort of like chuck down those thoughts just in case I forget them. And that's pretty much how I do my research. It's just a case then of like having to read all the articles and write it all up which that's obviously the longest bit. And also what I like to do whilst I am reading it up because it is a long process and you can lose morale, trust me, <laughs> is I have like a tally, um, I'll show you on the screen. So every time I read an article, I just like tally it down and then I can keep track of how many I'm reading each day. So if I know I've got to read like 40, for example, for the research that I want to do, then I can see how long it's going to take me and if I need to read like more that day or I can like read less that day. And it just, it gives me a good idea of like, what I'm actually achieving because it can also feel a bit tedious if you're just reading and reading all day. So actually having like a visual representation of this is how much you've read just like keeps me motivated. And now for the time lapse of me just reading all of my journals. <laughs> So here you can see me reading through all those articles. So one thing I like to do when I have a really long article or potentially a PDF version of a book is go through the contents page and highlight the sections that I want to read and then I write the page numbers down on a piece of paper. So then I don't have to constantly flick back to the top of the document to find which bits I want to read. And as I read an article, I highlight the sections that I think are important as I go. And here's a prime example of me copy and pasting the reference from that article into my research document and then copying the highlighted section into that document under the relevant sections. So I've now completed all of my research for my final two chapters. It took quite a long time, I think it took about four days for me to read all of that reading that I showed you earlier in the video. But now it's time to write the dissertation, so that's what you'll see in the next episode of my dissertation diaries. I hope you liked this video and hopefully some of the things I've said were helpful or just insightful. And I will see you in the next video. I'll see you next week. Bye guys!